Hello and welcome to Olivet United Methodist Church. I'm Sybil Perrell, the pastor here and at uh, Forestville United Methodist Church in Lylesville, North Carolina, down east toward the Sand Hills. I hope you'll stick with me today as I take 20 minutes or so for us to sing a song or so and, and look at some scripture from the Old Testament. Let us open with prayer this morning. Almighty God, we ask that you grant us your wisdom this day. As we worship you and learn from you, open our hearts and our minds to your words for us this day. Amen. As I said, we will continue in the Old Testament today, looking at some scripture from one of the minor prophets, Amos. I'm reading Amos chapter 7, verses 7 through 17. And I'm reading from the Common English Bible today. If you have a Bible or an app available, look up Amos. It's a little tiny book toward the back of the Old Testament. And read with me in whatever translation you have. This is what the Lord showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall with a plumb line in his hand. The Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? A plumb line, I said. Then the Lord said, See, I am setting a plumb line in the middle of my people Israel. I will never again forgive them. The shrines of Isaac will be made desolate, and the holy places of Israel will be laid waste, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, reported to Israel's king Jeroboam, Amos has plotted against you with the ha within the house of Israel. The land isn't able to cope with everything that he is saying. Amos has said, Jeroboam will die by the sword and Israel will be forced out of its land. Amaziah said to Amos, You who see things, go. Run away to the land of Judah. Eat your bread there and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's holy place and his royal house. Amos answered Amaziah, I am not a prophet, nor am I a prophet's son. But I am a shepherd and a trimmer of sycamore trees. But the Lord took me from shepherding the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now then, hear the Lord's word. You say, don't prophesy against Israel and don't preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, the Lord proclaims, your wife will become a prostitute in the city and your sons and your daughters will fall by the sword and your land will be measured and divided up and you yourself will die in an unclean land. May God add a blessing to us as we read and look at this scripture together today. Israel divided into two parts after Solomon's death. The southern kingdom, Judah, is now made up of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin only. Their center of government and religion is at Jerusalem. The northern kingdom, Israel, is made up of the other 10 tribes. Their center of government is in Samaria, but their religious center was in Bethel. Amos is a Judean from Jerusalem who has come to the northern kingdom because God has directed him to tell the people that they must repent or face death and exile. Earlier, Amos, like Abraham before him, argues and bargains with God. God comes to Amos in visions of disaster for Israel because they have fallen away from God and are now openly evil. And until chapter 7, Amos takes up for the people. He basically says, well, they're not so bad and, and they just need some instruction and direction to get back on track. Here in chapter 7, he has a third vision beginning with verse 7. And there is no rebuttal here from Amos. 
He now sees how they have not heeded his warnings and the wickedness of the people has not improved with his instruction and prophecies, but has actually gotten worse. They openly worship at their shrines to different gods on the hills, and they give only lip service to Jehovah, going through the motions once in a while. Amos understands that it is time for God to do something, that talking to them, prophesying to them, arguing with them has done no good whatsoever. God has now decided to test the people, and knowing that they will be found lacking, plans to send them into exile after many are killed by invading forces. In Amos' vision, he uses, God uses a plumb line as his illustration. The vision shows God holding a plumb line up against a wall. He says he's going to measure the people by the line. Now, as I've told you before, I'm a carpenter's daughter. And, and so I've seen my dad and my brother use a plumb line before. Brick masons use them a lot even today unless they use a laser. A plumb line is simply a, a, a string that has a heavy weight attached to the bottom so that it stretches out and is straight. You attach it to the front of the, or the top of the, of the wall uh, and or hold it right next to the wall and look to see if the line and the wall meet all the way down. If the wall is leaning, it may not be stable and it may fall. And that's what carpenters and masons talk about when they say that a wall isn't plumb. So God is saying he's going to measure the people and see if they are straight, straight with God. In other words, are they following God's commands and living their lives in godly ways? Amos tells the people of his vision and includes God's words about the king's lineage being destroyed. Although there was a marked difference between the rich and the poor, things have been pretty peaceful during Jeroboam's time. The judicial system was broken. The rich took from the poor charging exorbitant rates for loans and then causing the poor to go into enslavement to pay the debt. The rich got richer and the poor got poorer. Does that sound familiar to you at all? After Jeroboam's death, Israel was attacked by Assyria. All was destroyed and the people were sent into exile, all because they did not measure straight with God. Amaziah was high priest at Bethel and had a pretty good life. He was more afraid of losing his prestige and all the perks that went with it than he was of listening for God's direction for his life and the life of his people. So he told Amos to go home, back to Judah, and get paid for his prophecies there. He insinuates that Amos is a professional seer, like a palm reader today. Amos counters that he isn't a professional prophet and was only there because God told him to come there. The people of Israel didn't want to hear that they needed to change who and what they worshipped. Jeroboam didn't want to hear it, and Amaziah certainly didn't want to hear it. Everyone was status, satisfied with the status quo. There was peace in the country, and at least the rich people were happy and satisfied. They just wanted to sit back and take it easy. They weren't in the least concerned with staying plumb with God. We don't want to hear that God is seeing how we measure up either. We want to continue to live our lives as we want to live them. We certainly don't want to get involved in the injustice of the world, the, the state, the nation, the community. We just want to be left alone to live in peace and keep what we have and do what we've always done. And we're satisfied with our religious lives as well. Going to church once in a while, singing a few hymns, listening to the preacher, getting out of church within the hour. It doesn't crimp our, our day too much. And as to protesting and getting involved in missions and such, well, somebody else can do that kind of stuff. All 
we don't mind buying some things to give to different charities. Or, and we don't even mind going and working maybe a couple of hours to a day, once a year or so. That's not too bad. Things are good. Not great, but good. Things are fine just the way they are. But God continues to measure us. Our way of life, our government, how we treat the poor, and how we react to injustice. Our world is much like the world of Amos. There is a great distance between the rich and the poor with very few in between. There is injustice in our court systems and our governments. There is hate of anyone who thinks, looks, or acts differently. And there is violence just for the sake of violence. God is speaking to us today, just as he spoke to the people of Israel in the time of Amos. We must listen or see our way of life obliterated just like it was for Amaziah. When we see the poor being taken advantage of, do we speak up? Do we intervene? Do we help? Or do we have the attitude of, how does that affect me? When we see injustice of any kind, do we protest? Do we feel we need to keep our heads down and not make waves? In Psalm 82, which is the lectionary psalm for this week, the psalmist makes a request of God. Rise up, God. Judge the earth because you hold all nations in your possession. God still has his plumb line and still uses it. We see this idea of judgment and we are afraid. Afraid we won't measure up. We won't be seen as staying plumb when God's judgment comes on us. Or at least we should be afraid at least a little. After all, God is perfectly good. How could we possibly be seen as worthy in God's eyes? We are just imperfect humans. Far from being perfect if we'll admit it to ourselves. But you know, we have this ace in the hole with God. We have Jesus that perfect human who is righteousness itself. If we have asked Jesus to take control of our lives, and if we have accepted that control, then we can be measured not by our own plumbness, but by Christ's. God judges us through Jesus, and that makes us worthy. But this only works if we turned our lives over to Christ, if we have accepted the Holy Spirit into our hearts and, and allowed it to guide and direct us. As we grow closer to Christ, journeying toward perfection in love. If we stay plumb, walking straight and tall by that narrow road, our life is transformed by the love and care of Christ. Only then will we be judged as plumb by God. Are you staying plumb? Are you straight with God? Are you straight with yourself? When God calls us to be his hands and feet in the world, do we say, yes, Lord, send me? Or do we make excuses that we're too old or too young or too inexperienced, that we're just as in as bad a shape as these other people are? and so can't help. This is how we're measured by God. The Bible's given to us so that we can learn from the mistakes of the past, that we can learn from Amos and Amaziah and Jeroboam. Listen for God and heed his warnings for us, for our nation and our world. Then go out treating others as we would like to be treated, caring for others as Jesus would, and helping others so they too can get straight with God. Turn control of your life over to Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Let them work on your heart. 
so that you are unafraid of God holding up that plumb line to your life. Because you know Jesus has straightened you for judgment. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, we thank you. Even though we are afraid, we thank you for judgment. The judgment that we see will show us to be not perfect, but made perfect by Christ. We thank you for new life, a new great-granddaughter. How wonderful is that? We thank you for the rain that we've received and how it has perked things up so well. We thank you for just being able to be with family, either on vacation or staycation. But we also have concerns, Lord. We are concerned for those that are traveling so many in our country, going places and doing things this year for the first time in, in several years. Keep them safe, Lord, as they travel. We ask you to be with Catherine, with Cindy, with Louise, with Ed, and with the Ross family. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who is plumb and stays plumb so that we can stay plumb. Amen. Our final hymn is the first verse of number 430. O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. Words are by Washington Gladden, and music is by H. Percy Smith. Sing with me if you know this old song. Oh, Master, let me walk with thee in lowly paths of service free. Tell me thy secret, help me bear the strain of toil, the fret of care. For our announcements, we do have Bible study today at 5.30 and at 10 o'clock on Monday morning in the Parsonage backyard or maybe inside according to the weather. I hope you'll come join us for the parables uh, as we look at those in the next few weeks. Forestville's mission for July is that we're concentrating on our homebound. Uh, each week, we'll concentrate on a different person with cards and visits and, and calls uh, to one of them. And this week is Louise Downer. And if you would like to send a card or to, to call her, then please give me a call and I will give you her information. Olivet's mission for July is soap and toothpaste, but we're also doing shortening and cooking oil. Uh, as we didn't have very much, so we're trying to collect a little bit more. Forestville's homecoming is two Sundays away. It'll be July 24th, so keep that in mind. If you would like to leave a comment, if you are online, you can do that right there on YouTube or on Olivet's Facebook page. Uh, and just... Tell me what you'd like us to do if you need prayer, if you would like me to call you, if you would like to call me. Uh, you know, just leave me a comment and I will proceed from there. If you would like to, uh, to call me or text me, you can do that at 704-640-6872. If you are listening by sermon by phone, then you can write me a letter or give me a call. You can write me at P.O. Box 452, Lylesville, North Carolina, 28091. And I will get it. You can just address it to the pastor. You don't have to worry about trying to spell my name. Now receive this blessing from God. Walk closely with Jesus daily, staying straight with God. Do those things Jesus would do, fighting for justice, caring for those in need. Stay plumb with God. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for being with me. Hope to see you next week. Bye-bye now.